So in this video tutorial, we're going to spend a little bit of time talking about how to map your course objectives in a general education course to the new institutional student learning outcomes. Some of the items that you'll need are your course outline, of course, with the original institutional student learning outcome mapping on the right hand side here. You also want to have a copy of the new institutional student learning outcomes and all of the subcategories as shown here. I'll try to put a link in the description. You may also want to have a few of the AACU value rubrics opened up or the tools that you plan to use opened up so that you can effectively gauge whether or not a specific course objective should be mapped to a specific ISLO. For the purpose of this tutorial, I've brought up the three that seem to give people the most trouble, the critical value or critical thinking value rubric. So critical thinking, inquiry and analysis, and then problem solving. So we're coming back over here to our course outline. We've got the original ISLO mapping all taken care of. And we just want to double check and see if the mapping is effective as is. We know there's a communication category in the new ISLOs. So producing coherent texts within common college level written forms, this obviously relates to communication. The only thing that we have to do is indicate the subcategory. So as you'll see in the new ISLOs, there are two subcategories, oral and written. This says right in the description itself that we're dealing with written forms. So we're going to go ahead and just put written in there. The problems begin in this course outline with objective B. You can see here that we, we've got the course objective directly from the uh, SUNY GER mandate demonstrate the ability to revise and improve college level texts and we've selected critical thinking. If you look a little closer you can see that there is a degree of method underlying the seeming madness here. We have one, two, three, four, and one. What we tried to do when we, when we mapped the course objectives to the ISLOs is make sure that the course accounted for all of the ISLOs. And there are a lot of different troubleshooting methods that people used um, to work through problems that they thought might occur down the road relating to the mapping. Uh, some people used an approach similar to what we've got here and made sure that the course accounted for all of the ISLOs. Others simply put every ISLO within each of uh, the course objective categories, so they would just, okay, produce coherent texts, one, two, three, four. It accounts for all four of the institutional student learning outcomes. Other people would just map the course to one institutional student learning outcome to limit uh, how often they might be assessed down the road. And as I move forward with this one, I think we're going to find that it's most viable to map all of these to communication in some manner or another. Anyways, so we're back to number or letter B here, demonstrate the ability to revise and improve college level text. And we have that mapped to critical thinking. It's going to be somewhat difficult to make a viable argument for why this is mapped to critical thinking, but just to be safe, let's go back and look at what exactly the definition for critical thinking is here. It requires students to demonstrate competency in formulating conclusions as a result of exploration, evaluation, and analysis. Students will explore, evaluate, and analyze objects, subjects, and phenomena. Now, it could be said that responding to critique from a peer or from a professor requires a student to formulate a conclusion about that critique um, and explore avenues by which the critique might be addressed. Um, but remember that it's not just whether or not the student is doing it, but how effectively can it be assessed? And in this circumstance, it's going to be somewhat difficult to assess the students. Let's go back here. Ability to revise and improve college level text as a form of critical thinking. You can go one step further 
if you want to, and you can look at the actual criteria that are listed in the rubrics. And I would recommend going about level two in the milestones. That's where you want your students to typically be for a level 100 or 200 course. And you can see even here, specific position, acknowledges different sides of an issue, conclusion is logically tied to information, some related outcomes are identified clearly. You could shoehorn it in if you wanted to, but ultimately, this is an element of communication. Moreover, it's an element of written communication. So we move down, researching a topic, developing an argument, and organizing and supporting details. You see in the new ISLOs, professional competence has ultimately been replaced by industry, professional, discipline-specific knowledge and skills. Now we can make the argument that this is discipline-specific knowledge and skills, but the truth is any of these Objectives could be considered discipline specific because they're about writing, right? So for some general education categories, specifically communication, you're dealing with kind of an overlap between the idea of these discipline specific skills and written communication. So we want to account for the one that will yield the best results. We've got to change the number up here, don't we? All right. Now, developing an argument and organizing supporting details, this potentially could be critical thinking. And this will be something the department will have to discuss as we move forward. The real issue here is that we're assessing the course for GER 10, which deals with communication across the board. If we add critical thinking into the mix in the ISLO category, then we have the potential to assess for communication one semester and then critical thinking during that same semester, which causes more assessment work uh, than what might be necessary. There'll be other courses that can deal with critical thinking. So we're thinking not just in terms of our own courses, but we're thinking about assessment in, in a grander scheme and the sustainability of assessment as we move forward. I would go just based on the argument that I made a second ago with communication. I love that. Whatever. It doesn't matter. We're not looking for aesthetic here, are we? And written. Um, and that's basically how you would proceed with this process for your general education courses. If you have any questions, of course, you can reach me at any time via email or phone. I'd be happy to help you or meet with you one-on-one. -on -one to assist you with the mapping of your ISLOs to course objectives.